All right, so you may be wondering, when is a good time to transition out of a snaffle into something else? Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't know the answer to that because I don't know your situation and your end goals, but I'm gonna tell you kind of some of the things I go through when I'm deciding when to transition and what to transition to. So on a baby, I have to decide pretty early if I'm gonna start them and ride them a lot in the snaffle or if I'm gonna go slower and maybe use a halter or a hack more and then go to the snaffle. Usually, uh, I like to get them in a, in a bit pretty quick just because a lot of the people that I've ridden for aren't gonna do some of this hackamore stuff, so it doesn't really serve any purpose for me to go slow in that way. I will go though, and you'll see here in transition, I will go to a hackamore at some point in time just because I think foundationally it's good for them to learn balance by themselves with a signal style um, bridle than it is just to be pulled around. And so. When I'm looking at a horse and trying to decide when to transition them, I basically have a checklist in my head. So I want to make sure they're safe, number one, and you can go through a whole bunch of scenarios to decide if they're safe or not. But if I'm riding them outside and I don't feel like they're going to shy away from me or get grumpy and try to hop, then I, I deem them pretty safe. Now, another big part of that checklist for me is are they rope safe can i do everything outside roping with the snaffle on and when i get to that point i start looking to get out the reason why is a snaffle is a great tool it's definitely something that is really easy to mess up even really really good people have a hard time making sure to not create problems in young horses and so when you're riding a snaffle it's a two-handed apparatus and if you start to do stuff more one-handed you need to be looking to get out of that not necessarily to never come back to the snaffle but you need to decide i'm doing stuff one-handed let's get moving so i think when you're transitioning i like to think about a 51 percent rule and that is if 51% of the time I'm doing things one-handed and my checklist is completed as far as safety goes, I'm going to start going one-handed. And when I do that, I'm going to stay out of the snaffle. Now, if I'm teaching something new, so this is a horse that I want to put a lot of handle on, teaching them to spin, teaching them to stop, I'm going to go back to something that we have good communication on two-handed. So the 51% rule, that's something to remember. If 51% of the time you are using one hand, then you need to use a one-handed style bridle. So when I come out of the snaffle, usually I go to a Hackmore Bozell get up, just like this. And what I'll do is I will ride this on days that are slower. So working cows and pins, doing something where I'm not gonna be out all day or whatever I'm doing is pretty low stress, not a lot of left, not a lot of right. So that's where I'll start with this. I'll still probably ride two out of the, the days of the week in this snaffle, the rest I will go to here. And I will try my best to still ride two-handed, but when it doesn't warrant me being two-handed and I can just put my hand down and use my legs, I use this. The reason for that, this has pre-signal. So before I take direct pressure on this, this, this moves. And so it basically is the start of telling that horse that, hey, I'm about to touch you. There is some pre-signal in a snaffle, but because of all of this motion in here, most of that they cannot feel you know they can feel you coming up on the rain but it's not nearly as clear as this and as we go we want pre-signal we want the horse to be ready but we also want them to know it's coming um, just by the slightest movement so i'll ride him in this for quite a long time now if i feel like i'm going to start doing stuff faster or or i need maybe a little bit more pre-signal i'm going to move into a shanked bridle now that completely changes the game because not only do you have pre-signal because of the shank you know it moving around you also introduce curb pressure now when you have this hackamore on their curb does get moved and affected by these bars it really didn't ever get affected here and so when you go to transition here you need to decide you know is your horse ready and so if they're you know still kind of on the the um, bubble of being a little touchy, not necessarily dangerous, but maybe reactive, you might not wanna go here. You might wanna stay here till they're quiet because as soon as you introduce a curb strap, that's, that's a force they can't get away from and it's not necessarily bad, especially if you are soft-handed, but you just gotta know that's a pretty hard line in the sand that you're drawn with them and you've got to you know, not take that decision lightly. So this is the bit I usually go to first when I go to a shanked bit. And if you zoom in here, we can kind of look at it so the first thing that i look at is the shank not even the mouthpiece which may be incorrect but that's the way i do it this is kind of a two to one ratio so there's two of this same distance so this is the purchase this is the shank. okay so from here there's two purchase lengths 
in the bottom of that shank. What that tells me is that at some point in time, there will be a two to one ratio on this bit, but the longer the shank, the more pre-signal. So it kind of takes me a little bit of time to turn that bit over and that horse can feel it. So then I look at the mouthpiece. One, the connection right here. So this guy cannot pinch a horse. That's the nice thing about these Tom Balding bits. A lot of different makers do this tube connection. It cannot pinch them. Okay, as I look across here, this is very similar to the snaffle where it moves, but this has a spoon in it. Now, unlike the snaffle, if I bend this thing in half, it does not saw their tongue or pinch their tongue in half. So even if I do, knowing that I'm gonna be one-handed most of the time in this bridle, if I pull back fast, it's not gonna hurt them nearly as much as a snaffle would. And so the reason why I like this bit so much is it is slow. If I go fast because of all of this motion, it's not gonna grab them too fast, which usually is, you know, makes them pretty agreeable. But this spoon in conjunction with this shank starts to and also reinforces some pre-signal that I started here. When I start to take pressure out of those, or take the, the reins up and take the slack out, they start to feel that spoon come off and they know, you know, spoon comes off, then the shank comes back, and when the shank comes back, then, then we get into the curb strap and they start to teach themselves that pressure is coming. And so when I'm deciding to transition one out, I really do think day by day, what am I gonna be doing with that horse? And if it's something that's gonna be fast, and I don't necessarily know that I'm gonna be one-handed, even though that horse is really broke, I might ride him in the snaffle, but I am looking to try to create that horse into a one-handed device, you know, a one-handed tool, because long story short, if you're gonna be outside cowboy and doing anything, you're gonna have a rope down, and it really isn't practical to continue to pull on a horse if you're, you know, riding one-handed. So these, these are some bits that I use, the decisions I make when to transition, the 51% rule, and then also just a safety checklist. Even if you know you think 51% of the time I'm probably gonna be riding one-handed, but it's a cold day, you maybe haven't ridden your horse in a while, come back to your snaffle, there's nothing wrong with that. So this is a small overview of the bits I use to transition a horse. Obviously there's many more to get finally to a you know one-handed curb bit or something with more signal on it. But this is, this is just a small uh, look at what I do. So if you like this video and wanna see more videos just like this, Please like this video and subscribe to the Startup Cowboy channel.